Hi everyone, good morning. We're getting right to breaking news this morning. Firefighters are on the scene of a house fire in Deer Park. So Crim 2's Brandon T. Jones is live with a look at the damage. So Brandon, we know you just arrived at the scene not too long ago, but what can you tell us about this fire? Yeah, Tim Channing, we just got here about 10 or 15 minutes ago right here in Deer Park. And I'm just going to go ahead and step out of the way because as you can see right behind me, this is the home that caught fire. And I got a chance to just speak with crews here not too long ago, just within the last few minutes. And they gave me some information about this particular scene right here. So what we know is that one person is confirmed dead. Chiefs told me that he talked with the neighbors as well. He doesn't believe anyone else is unaccounted for and that neighbors told him that only one person lived in the home. The call came in at 342 for a heavy fire. The fire department is right down the street. So once they got here, they had about 20 or so first responders working the scene. At this moment, there is no confirmed cause. And currently right now, they're just checking the scene, trying to see if there's still any hot spots. Uh, but for the most part, the fire seems to be under control, but they're going to be out here for quite some time. There's no timeline at this particular moment, but they're going to just continue to do their due diligence and, and check the scene and try to figure out what caused this fire. But as for right now, that is the information we have. Again, one person is confirmed dead from this house fire right behind me here in Deer Park. We're going to continue to try to gather new elements, new information. And once we have that, we will relay that information to you. Tim Channing. All right, thank you, Brandon. Now turning to the weather, we're taking a live look outside right now, and as you can see, it is really foggy out at this time. The roads are pretty, pretty, the visibility is low, rather, on the roads right now, and as you can see right now from one of our cameras, you're definitely going to want to be careful as you're heading out for your morning commute, and don't turn on your bright lights this morning. It just makes things worse. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> do it. We do also have one school delay to tell you about right now. Warden School District is on a two-hour delay actually because of the foggy conditions there. All right, let's get over to meteorologist Thomas Patrick taking a closer look at the fog, Thomas. And, you know, you prepared us for this. Uh, what's kind of happening right now? Why, why is today foggy, I guess, compared to the previous days? Yeah, it, and this is very typical for the January season. Even if we have any snow on the ground, whether it's in those big piles or just as snow depth, a little bit of that moisture will escape from that snow basically day after day. So there will always be that residual moisture in the atmosphere first thing in the morning. And in this case, it is materializing as fog in those very low elevations, basically right through the core of downtown Spokane is where it's worse off right now, though you can start to see the pavilion start to shine back through that fog. So it is getting a little bit better. It is not as foggy as it was just an hour ago, but obviously those visibilities are no better than maybe a quarter mile through downtown Spokane. It is quite a bit better if you are coming up the hill towards the South Hill or out towards the airport. Deer Park also reporting some very low visibility at the moment, but that Spokane observation of the 10 mile visibility that is at the airport where conditions are clear over the West Plains, but not so much over downtown Spokane. So that's why those uh, those weather conditions can change in a hurry, especially if you are driving along Interstate 90. So the fog could be with us through about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning, but coming up, I'm going to be tracking a chance of snow over the weekend, so stay tuned for that. A Lataw County judge is expanding a gag order in the case against the man suspected of murdering four University of Idaho students. So the order limits investigators, law enforcement and case attorneys from talking about the case information in the case that is not public record in order to protect the defendant's right to a fair trial. It now includes attorneys for the family's victims. This includes the attorneys for the family of Kaylee Consalves, who have previously given statements to the media. And new this morning, Idaho Governor Brad Little says he had some sleepless nights after the murders, especially as the investigation and the search for a killer kicked into high gear. Governor Little allocated $1 million in state emergency funds to help pay for the costs of the all-encompassing investigation. Now, Little sat down with our sister station in Boise to talk about his involvement in the case. We pray and hope that nothing even remotely close to this ever happens again because you just, you know, the city of Moscow was just overwhelmed. Now the governor went on to praise the Moscow Police Department for their work on the investigation, saying that it sets an example for future investigations. The governor also criticized how the murder was covered by national news outlets, saying they did, quote, shoddy work trying to stir things up. 
Well, in just five days, Spokane's Convention Center will house Eastern Washington's largest homeless services event. Resources in the form of clothes, toiletries, and so much more will all be available to help anyone at risk or experiencing homelessness. Throughout the month, organizations and volunteers have been gathering supplies to go towards the Homeless Connect Resource Fair. One of those organizations is Pure Spokane. They've put together dozens of bags that will all be available next week for those in need. And so we're really glad that we were able to get the community behind us to collect winter clothing and blankets, even tents, sleeping bags, anything we can do to keep people warm until the weather changes, hopefully in spring. Vendors will also be on site and provide opportunities like housing, employment and skill training programs. The Homeless Connect Fair will be at the Convention Center on January 25th. Well, this morning we have an update from Washta on the size of the homeless encampment near I-90. New numbers show the camp is shrinking. Right now, there are almost 140 people at the camp, down 60 from just a month ago. The number of RVs at the camp is also down from 27 to 20 this week, with six of them towed from the site just yesterday. As of January 9th, Washdot says 51 people have moved from Camp Hope to the new Catalyst Transitional Housing Facility. It's 6.07 right now. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. The Hope House Shelter in downtown Spokane will remain open through the end of the year. Now, late last year, the Women's Shelter announced that it would be closing its doors at the end of the month due to a lack of funding. That would have meant the loss of 100 shelter beds in the middle of winter. Now, they have received enough money from the Department of Commerce and the City of Spokane to remain open until December 31st. Well, the trial of Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell will carry on as planned after a judge denied a request to postpone it in a hearing yesterday. Vallow and Daybell are charged with murder and conspiracy to commit the murders of Vallow's two children, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow, and Chad's late wife, Tammy Daybell. The judge also decided that Vallow and Daybell will not be allowed to have contact leading up to the trial. The next hearing is scheduled for February 9th. The Idaho Transportation Department says traffic deaths went down in 2022 by 19%. The Idaho Office of Highway Safety says 219 people died on Idaho roads last year. That's down from 271 in 2021.